Okay, today we want to talk about, this will be about circles from section, in the foundation section of the book four. And I assume you all know kind of the geometric idea of a circle that you have a fixed point that's called the center. And, um, but that the actual circle are all a fixed distance, just pretend that that actually looks circular, um, a fixed distance R from the center. So those are um, the main characteristics that all of these points, so these points out here, let's see, out here on the outside are really the points, these green points are the points that make up the circle right there, all the points that are the same distance away. Now, so uh, the definition, a circle, a circle, is a set of points in a two-dimensional plane, in the xy plane, that are a fixed distance are from a fixed point, which we usually call the center, and we denote the center by h comma k as a point, okay? Uh, and we do use these terms like this is the center, this is r the radius of the circle, right? R is the radius, okay? And so we have this idea of um, this distance formula, and we have, so for example, I have this distance formula that we developed, x, um, let's say 2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and then that's distance. And here we're talking about all of these points that are where the distances are, and I have this general, a general point x that's um, associated with h, and a general point y that's associated with k. Okay, so these, these are, like x and y represent these points that can change, or kind of my variable point, and h is, um, h, k is the center. And so usually we then think about getting this will, and if you um, graph this on your graph, this will actually map out kind of this top half of the circle, um, right? So really we want to take, and, and I, we did this when we did the distance, we took the positive square root. Here we kind of want to get everything, so really the equation of the circle happens when I get, when I square both sides of this and get rid of this square root, and then you'll get kind of both hemispheres of this circle, or both the top and, and bottom half, okay? This is called the standard form of a circle, this one right here. Okay, so an example of this. Uh, the amazing thing about the standard form is you can read off the center and the radius right from the standard form. So an example is, for example, let's say I have a circle with equation in standard form, x um, plus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to 16. Immediately these points right here, the 2 and the 3 and the 16, tell me um, almost everything that I need to know about the circle. So the center of this circle is this um, negative 2 and positive 3. Do you see how this original form has a negative right there? So when this number is positive in here, really that means h is negative 2 because this is x minus negative 2, okay? And then this is y minus 3, so my center is at negative 2, 3, and then I have radius, which is, this is r squared here, 
So if r squared is 16, then the radius is 4. And I can just read those off from the form. So in some ways, this is a really easy form to work with. I could plot this very quickly, even by hand. Um, and then I assume that you can plug in the circle. So if you want, plug in the values. So example, write the equation of a circle. with radius 2 and center um, negative 1, 7, something like that. And this um, equation, of course, comes from this. I start with this x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And then it's a matter of plugging in these pieces that I know what they are. So h is, let's see, this is my h, this is k, and here's r. So it's x minus negative 1 squared plus y minus 7 squared is equal to 2 squared. Or if I simplify this, I get x plus 1 squared plus y minus 7 squared equals 4. OK? OK, so there's another form to circles which we sometimes encounter them in, um, which um, so if I don't know something about, or sometimes they occur, so for example, I can actually FOIL these two things out. So, and let me do that. So let's say if I FOIL these two binomials out from here, so separately, I would get x squared plus 2x plus 1, y squared minus, and let's see, it's minus 14y plus 49, I think. Check my math on that is equal to 4. Um, and then you can see um, this kind of, if I combine all of these numbers that are floating around, x squared plus 2x plus y squared minus 14y, and then I'll have a 49 plus 1, which is 50, uh, but minus 4. So I think I get a plus 46 is equal to 0. This is another form that we sometimes encounter circles. It's called the general form. These uh, names are not general form. They, they're not very descriptive, I don't think, for circles. Um, so it, this one is less useful or less easy to work with. Um, now, I want to show how to go back from the general form to the standard form because it's much easier to work with circles in the standard form. Okay? So let's show how to do that. So how do I go back? Well, you'll notice what we did going this way was that we used FOIL, right? And I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but the kind of opposite operation of foiling is to factor something, OK? And so even if it's not easily factorable, I want to, in this case, create things that are factorable. And we talked um, just the other day, I think, about perfect square trinomials. And those are the types of trinomials that I'm trying to create here that factor to something like this, this x plus something squared. OK? So if I don't know what the equation is, and let's maybe start, let, I'm going to start with this one, and then I'm going to also do another example, OK? So let's start with this example that I have, x squared plus 2x plus y squared minus 14y plus 46 is equal to 0, OK? Um, now, usually in this process, the question kind of becomes what we're going to um, use this constant to add and subtract things that will make um, it easier for us to factor. So I want to take a look at this quantity. So the first thing I want to take a look at is this x squared plus 2x, OK? Now, we do this process called completing the square.
and I want to add or subtract something, a number here, that will make this a perfect square trinomial. Okay? Now the way I do that is that this perfect square trinomial, if you notice when you FOIL, you get kind of the double of that quantity, whatever this original number was, double that quantity here. So to go backwards, I take half of it of this quantity b, which we usually call b, because in quadratics it's a x squared plus bx plus c, right? So we usually take half of b, and it, half of b is 1 in this case. Then I square that. Um, in this case, I could just get 1 again, and that's what I add. Now, if you look, I have created something that will factor now to be x plus 1 squared, okay? So I have done this and created this thing that's factorable to a perfect square trinomial, um, and that still kind of leads to this x squared plus 2x piece. Now, I can't ignore the fact that I still have this other stuff in my equation, and that I have added something right here, right? And I have an equal sign in this equation, so when I add 1 to the left side, I also have to add 1 to the right side. So right now I'm at this step, stage. y squared minus 14y plus 46 is equal to now 1. Okay? Okay. Um, okay, so, and you'll see some people have a real preference to bring this constant over to the right side at the very beginning of this process. You can do kind of whatever you want to with a constant, um, but but the, you'll see that approach in, in some presentations. Okay, so now I want to do the same thing to this y squared piece. So if you kind of got it the first time, try and do it by yourself. If you didn't, then follow along with me again. x plus 1 squared, okay? And then here's my piece that I'm going to kind of work with at y squared minus 14y. And then I have to add something. The thing that I'm going to add, I take this b piece, I half it, and I get negative 7. And then I square it to get 49. And so I have to add 49 right here. Okay? I still have this plus 46 and I still have 1, and because I added 49 here, I also have to add 49 on the other side. Okay, and now I'm going to factor. So I have x plus 1 squared plus, and I factor this now trinomial, which is in blue, y minus 7 squared. I still have a plus 46 and equal to 50 on the other side, and if I move the 46 to the other side, I should get x plus 1 squared plus y minus 7 squared is equal to 4. Okay. Um, Let's see, I want to maybe do one more of these completing the squares for you. Um, change to standard form. And I'll say it's x squared plus y squared minus 2xy, 2x minus 4y minus 4 is equal to 0. Um, okay, so I'm going to group these x and y pieces together that I need. So I have an x squared minus 2x. And I'm going to create kind of this blank space, because plus blank, I'm going to create this first trinomial, right? Plus this y squared minus 4y, and again, plus blank, that's my second trinomial, right? And maybe I will at this point show kind of if I move the 4 to the other side so you can see that. So that kind of moves over, okay? 
Okay, so now for each of these, I'm going to take this and half it, that's negative 1, square it, positive 1, and that's what I add. Here, take half of this negative 4, it's negative 2, square it, positive 4, and that's what I add. So here I added a plus 1 and a plus 4. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to factor. This is x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 9. So this is a circle that has center 1, 2, and radius is 3. Okay? Now I'll make a quick note here. Um, this process is heavily dependent upon the fact that I have a coefficient of 1 on this x squared piece and 1 on this y squared piece. If you have any other coefficient, a non-unit coefficient, then you have to factor that out, factor whatever it is, and then you can move forward with this kind of completing the square process. Okay? Okay, I think that should be about it for circles. Let me know if you have any questions.